everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Look, I'm going to get right to the point. I need to have a very uh, serious uh, one-way conversation uh, with you. Some of you guys have followed me for as long as 10 or 11 years, uh, which spans the entire uh time I've had a presence on social media in one place or another and uh, some of you I have developed relationships with some of you I have worked with personally uh, others of you have come along at different points and junctures uh, doing this journey and you have been a part and seen what I do or you have had the opportunity to listen and learn and share and do so many other things. Uh, those of you who have been around for a while know that I have passions outside of teaching, outside of writing, outside of lecturing, and outside of doing what I do for a living in business. I have a passion and that passion is in the community. That passion is in providing solutions and actually taking action. Uh, it would be hard for me to talk if there wasn't some action in direct correspondence to what I say. And to give you an example, I talk a lot about family. I talk a lot about our children. I talk a lot about protecting our women. I talk a lot about giving space to our men to be human uh, and to admit that they need help. I talk about mental health and I'm involved in the community in every last one of those ways. There's not a literally, literally, there's not a day that someone isn't referring someone to me for services. There's not a day that a mother, a black mother, doesn't come to me concerned about her black son. Uh, there's oftentimes black men are coming to me and asking for counsel. And those things that I can do on the spot that don't have a large demand for resources, they're just done, not even thought about. I talk to people every day in some pretty precarious situations and give them insight and, 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 and uh, share with them resources. Uh, I support other people who are doing it in, in the community, uh, in spirit, in, in co consultation, and in finance. Um, and I've been doing this for years, uh, but there has been a great influx uh, for people in need, uh, people suffering from trauma, from childhood experiences, people who are struggling with not knowing what to do about wayward sons and so, so many other things. I've been telling you guys for a while that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. The Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative uh, and uh, a secondary, the Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Darts, but Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Program is in the middle of a fundraiser and literally where we haven't raised any funds. Uh, let me tell you, what we need in specific and what I'm going to be seeking. We need to raise a minimum of $25,000 by the end of this month. And I'm going to get right to the point of what that $25,000 is for. We need computers. Uh, we need computers uh, to use as teaching tools. We need computers to use as management tools. We need computers uh, to be able to provide resources that these young uh, children um, and the children that will be using the computers will be between the ages of 9 and 18. Um, but the uh, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative actually starts at the age of 4. We are focused on the proper socialization of black boys, but we need computers, we need books. We need books because books take the mind and guide the mind. We need to train them to be readers, uh, not just tell them to read. We need to train them to be readers. We need to engage them with specified material that we control so that we know what's feeding their mind. We need training material. The, also, there's a cost to one-on-one -on -one interventions, which I do a lot of. 
uh, and we need more resources. So we also need to be training providers. We need to train people who are willing to actually work with people. We need to do that. Uh, we need uh, resources for temporary uh, emergency housing, and this is for all kids, male and female and women. Uh, we also are uh, an organization that has been for years focused on uh, fighting mass incarceration uh, and recidivism. And the way that we do that by one is dealing with the school to prison pipeline where our boys are alienated in the academic process as early as five years old um, and alienated. And we talked about this. If you want to see it, we talked about it on the last uh, segment of the teachers with Dr. Uh, Cleet Ladd about how that's done. And we want to interrupt that. We want to get ahead of it. We want to give our boys a fighting chance. On the recidivism side, it's about meeting them when they come out or starting to work with them while they're still in to prepare them to be productive and functional in society so that they don't trickle back into the lifestyles that landed them, landed them, lifestyles and the thinking, more importantly, that landed them into the system and another what another thing we are battling in our community and i have a mother that i'm bringing on this weekend who lost her son in ferguson of all places to violence and her 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 statement to me when i spoke with her this morning was we need to stop saying black lives matter number one is she's not a fan of the organization uh black lives matter with good reason but she needs. To, she said that we as a people need to stop saying Black Lives Matter and start saying Black Lives Matter when a police kills a black man. Because she said black boys are dying in the hood every day and nobody says a word. And she's absolutely right. And that's because we don't have a unified front to deal with this. And so another major focus, matter of fact, Black Men Lead started with me doing research on how to confront violence in the black community and discovering what's the leading causes and catalysts behind violence at a very microscopic level. What's driving it? Not, not you can say gang violence, but gang violence is literally a result or a symptom of something. We need to talk about what the cause is and it's the lack of proper racial socialization. And that's what uh, the rite of passage element in Black Men Lead is about. We need your support. We need to raise this money uh, by the end of the month. We need to have these resources in play. There are so many people who are in need of what we do, and there simply aren't the resources. There are so many people in need of, let me turn this around. I want you to be able to see my face. There are so many people who need what I literally have the expertise to give but I'm one person. I can't do it by myself. I literally had to sit down with my interventionists because I'm so stretched to the tilt of what I'm trying to do in, uh, on so many different uh, fronts. And literally, they were saying to me, you can't do it by yourself. Stop trying to do it by yourself. You're not gonna be able to do it by yourself. Uh, no matter how much you want to do it, no matter how much you're passionate about it, you're going to have to solicit help. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can do things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can pay for things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can sit down and help you strategize. You're going to have to do that. And so this is me sitting down and becoming even more invested in this. I've talked about it, and I tell you it needs to be done. You know, and my thing is, this isn't asking or forcing anybody to do anything. I'm talking to the people who are truly, genuinely, authentically concerned about the plight of our people and concerned about those in the community that don't have the access and opportunities that they have. Knowing that there are people out there that don't even know they have choices. There are literally people out there that think the life that they're living is the only life they'll ever have. And there's not a lot of people out there telling them different. And they need to know. And we need to be in the minds of these young boys as early as possible so that we can structure their thinking. They're thinking towards their future. They're thinking towards themselves and others who look like them. They're thinking towards the fairer sex and how they should be treated, how they should be handled. 
the, 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 the thinking towards what the responsibilities of manhood really is, what really are, and how, how do you function in them? What does being a provider mean? What does being a protector mean? What does being a physical, emotional, and uh, spiritual covering look like? What does being out in front in the community be, look like? All of these things are a part of the program. All of these things are necessary. We can talk until we're blowing the face about what we need in the community, but there has to be a structured, a structured, deliberate effort. When I talk about deliberate, I, 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 I like to define it because a lot of people hear it and keep moving. Deliberate means that there is a conscious and intentional focus in thought and action to achieve a goal. We've got to be deliberate in it. We got to literally be thinking the right thing and moving in the right way, simultaneously doing something to change it. We're not preparing our kids. We're not holistically educating our kids. And I've told you in, in both in the miseducation of black youth in America and in um, academic apartheid that the true definition of education is the holistic preparation and empowerment of youth to go out into a world as adults and not only compete but uh, win, compete in a world that's hostile towards them and win. That's what we're up against. And that's why we consistently find ourselves at the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder. That's why we consistently, consistently find ourselves in last place in every statistical category that matters as far as social standing, uh, political influence, political power, social uh, 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 sufficiency in so many other ways. It's because we're not preparing our youth. We're sitting up and hoping they can go out into a world half prepared, predominantly educated by a system that does not take their best interests into mind. And they go out and they fail miserably. Even when they think they're succeeding, they're failing. Why? Because they are not preparing the next generation and they are not in a situation where they are in control of their own destiny. They are still hoping and waiting and looking to appease someone else so that they can have a piece of their pie. And we are responsible for doing better. So once again, I'm asking you to look in the description box. There's going to be two links and then there will be the organization's cash app handle. I'm asking you, if we're going to do this, that needs to be on average. We are what? 19 days away from the end of the month. So there needs to be a little over $1,200 or so a day minimum, you know, and I, there are people out here that actually will watch this video that could do this by themselves. And I, and, and I would love to see you stand up. I would love to see that one sponsor come forth and say, let's do the work. I would also like to see some people who have the ability to do some of the things I mentioned step up and be a part of the solution. Because, again, I'm literally engaging all of the needs of people who need interventions in whatever way it is. It's me. And literally, when you carry that, when you're dealing with some, when, when everything you're dealing with with, the, with with these interventions has something to do with trauma, it takes a toll on you because I'm an empath. I'm a person that actually cares. That's what makes me as good as I am in dealing with people. I'm not just out there running them through steps. I, I, I can feel what they're going through. And I feel it in a way that the average person doesn't because I'm not just an emotional empath. I'm a spiritual empath. I'm literally connected when I deal with people. That's why so many of my videos are so passionate because I can connect because I'm there. And so I am right now challenging you to not only watch this video, to not only give, but to share this video with at least four other people that you believe think like you. And if you don't have four other people that think like you, you need to get with me anyway because that is a part of our problem. We are surrounded by a circle that doesn't see us in the future that we need to be in. We are living around people who are happy where they're at. And that has to change. So after you watch this video, share it with four people who think like you and ask them to match your gift. Then press the like button, press the share button, 
and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because we are really going to start bringing you a bunch of stuff like the next few weeks we're going to deal with uh this uh beautiful grandmother um we're going to be dealing with this beautiful grandmother that lost her grandson and what she's going through and i mean she's going through a lot uh, it really took a lot of me talking with her to believe that she's even ready to talk to somebody, but I believe that's going to be a part of her healing, being able to tell her son's story. But the beautiful thing is the way she's dealing with it is she literally started the process of building an app uh, for grief, people who are in grief, in the grief process, that they can connect to one another. Because she said she found so many times that she would wake up and in tears and in horror and there was no one to reach out to and so she's creating this app so that there will always be someone that you can connect with and talk to no matter what time it is no matter what's going on and I thought that was beautiful and I told her I was going to get behind her and um, me and a couple of other people uh, within the organization are definitely going to be connecting with her and you're going to get to meet her um, and you know I'm excited about that, but then the week after that, we're going to be bringing you the story of a young girl who walked away to go cash a check and never came home. Uh, she happens to be uh, the cousin of Tiffany, who you met yesterday, who is my co-host on Cries of a Nation. So we are going to be really attack attacking some issues with the purpose of bringing solutions and healing. Uh, to our nation, to our land, and it's so important. So, again, show some love. We're on the on, on the push to raise twenty five thousand in nineteen days, and let's start today strong. That's my request. That's my challenge. Let's do it. A fundraiser that you on support. That note, what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like. Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.